Hello everybody and welcome to another video here on Philly Sports Network. It's a Sunday fun day! And you know what that means. It means we've got to shake it up. We've got to do something interesting. And what is more fun than a 53-man roster prediction in early May? I can't think of much. And of course, what this means is it does shine a spotlight into areas of the roster we may have previously overlooked. The Eagles have injected 10 new players into their roster. They've had an entire free agency overhaul. But we need to work out where the main battles this summer are going to be. And if there are any underdogs we need to keep an eye on. So here is my first attempt at projecting how the Eagles will look come the first game of the season. If you are new around here, it would be amazing if you could hit that subscribe button. And as always, you can get your daily dose of Philadelphia sports coverage from myself and all of our writers over at phillysportsnetwork.com. And while we've got your attention, just a few more seconds, we are now trying to do daily Twitch live streams around 7 p.m. Eastern until 1 in the morning. And here's a taste of what you can expect. No, i It's a little bit chaotic, but it's a lot of fun, and we would love to have as many of you tune in as possible. It's also a great time to talk Eagles as well, in a little bit of a relaxed setting, where we can engage with you guys. So if you feel like stopping by, that will be absolutely amazing. But on to what you've all come for, my 53-man roster prediction. One important thing to note though is that obviously the NFL are changing the way rosters are structured. Essentially what they've invoked this year as part of the new CBA is that rosters can now be expanded to 55 during the regular season. Now players from the practice squad can be called up and sent down twice without having to clear waivers, giving teams more security around some of their longer term projects. While we can't exactly project who will be moving up and coming down, we can sort of see more of a value in the practice squad this year. And they've also added two extra spots to the practice squad. So we've now got a 12-man practice squad and an essentially 55-man fluctuating roster. So just keep that in mind as we go through this video. Quarterback, the Eagles are obviously keeping three on the roster here, Carson Wentz, Jalen Hurts and Nate Sudfeld. There are no shocks at all, apart from the, you know, the 53rd overall pick being spent on a quarterback. But we're past that now, we're past it, we're all okay. Um, I do think Carl Letter has a legitimate chance of dethroning Nate Sudfeld for that QB3 role. That will be an interesting narrative to watch through the summer, as well as how rigid or flexible Hurts' role in the offence appears to be. The Eagles don't typically give too much away during training camps, so we may just see Jalen Hurts limited to sort of quarterbacking roles and, and working with the B team, so to speak. But I do think that once preseason rolls around, they're just going to try and get a gauge for where he is now. Overall, though, no major shocks. I think we expect these three names to be on the Eagles final roster by the end of August. On to running back and I'm just thankful we're living in a world where Boston Scott is a certified roster lock behind one of the most impactful rookies of 2019. Now had the Eagles not signed Corey Clement recently I think Michael Warren would have been my undrafted underdog here as more of a physical runner but I feel as though that the sheer speed Killings brings to the table will be the perfect complement to a very versatile backfield so he will be the undrafted guy I'm looking at to sneak on as that that fourth running back. Miles Sanders leads a charge and the rest of the guys are going to make up a very, very explosive committee. On to the offensive line and it is all the familiar faces up front until we get to the backups. There's no more Halapula Vati Vitae, which is going to put some pressure on the development of backup tackles. This is where guys like Jordan Mailata and rookie Prince Tega Wanago come in, but I think as though the versatility of Matt Pryor will play into this and just give them that breathing room right away. He had a very impressive stint in 2019 when called upon and I think that's going to take some of the pressure off of those guys. Jack Driscoll should be able to then transition inside without that weight on his shoulders. It will allow Jordan Mailata another chance at just climbing an extra rung off the ladder and Nate Herbig who joined the team last year as an undrafted free agent will be another insurance policy. Tight end, the most controversial position on the... T I'm, I'm kidding, it's really not. It's Zach Ertz, it's Dallas Goddard but there is a surprise in the way of Alex Ellis because the Richard Rodgers experiment has failed and Josh Perkins to me is more of an oversized slot guy than an inline blocker and that's what the Eagles need from their tight end spot right now and Perkins has had his moments I think the Eagles may covet something a little bit more from their tight end three. Ellis shined towards the end of preseason after initially joining the team and was just unable to make the cut. I think Luck swings his way this time around and he's able to sneak on as that TE3. The 
Okay, our first major headache of the day comes at wide receiver, and the reason for it is the team have currently got 14 on their roster. And while the sense of speed is blistering, cramming it all into a position group where they usually carry six guys is going to be tricky. Especially because you've got two guys who don't necessarily fit that mould in JJ Ortega Whiteside and Olshon Jeffrey. The only hope here is that Olshon's injury recovery leads him to starting the season on the physically unable to perform list, giving the Eagles some much needed flexibility. Those two extra roster spots per week could well come in handy, but you're still probably going to have to part ways with a name that's less than ideal, and you can only call them up twice without risking them to waivers. This format gives the Eagles the most bang for their buck, providing Kez Watkins can be rotated on and off of that additional roster spot. So it's Jaydor as that possession receiver, Jackson and Rager at WR2. In the slot, we've got Greg Ward Jr. and Marquise Goodwin, and then it's an absolute free-for-all beneath those guys. But we're very interested to see how you would play this. So let me know your wide receiver projection in the comments down below and why, because I feel like this one could cause a lot of discussion. On to defense, we're taking four at tackle, and in my opinion, this is one of the best rotations in the NFL. Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave, Malik Jackson, and my favorite pluck of last year's offseason, Hassan Ridgeway. That has just got fun written all over it. I cannot wait to see how how that group perform in 2020. Defensive end and they're going light here and I'm going to explain why. They've only got Graham Barnett, Sweat and Miller but Malik Jackson has shown he can line up at the 5 tech spot at Jacksonville and I think he will here as well fill in that Michael Bennett role. A jump in production from Sweat and Miller is absolutely needed. Whether that happens or not is anyone's guess, but with no Vinny Curry around, the gamble has already been made. They may bring in another name to spice this up a bit and to add some extra depth to the position. They could even keep a guy around like Jannard Avery, who I still feel is a stand-up pass rusher, but even he has got a long hill to climb, and we're going to touch on why next. And back here, the Eagles are going to keep five, and I think it's Nate Gary, Davion Taylor, the special teams tandem of Alex Singleton and Duke Riley, and TJ Edwards. Edwards, to me, will thrive as a Mike linebacker, with Nate Gary on the outside and rapid rookie Davion Taylor on the other. Oddly, this isn't that much of a weird drop compared to what they had last year, and Nate Gary, with another year under his belt, I feel, can at least eliminate some of those weird errors that plagued what was otherwise quite a productive season. Now, some of you are going to ask about Sean Bradley, the rookie that was drafted by the Eagles. I think he's a practice squad candidate. Jannard Avery has got a lot of work to do because he doesn't have a role. He wasn't a defensive end. He had one sack in his debut and disappeared, and he wasn't an outside linebacker. There's this weird stand-up edge rusher vibe that he's got, and unless he can either sink down into his own role that warrants keeping him around, this is going to be a very, very tricky offseason for the former Cleveland Brown, who the Eagles did give up a fourth-round draft pick for. On to cornerback, and again, another fascinating position to watch play out. We've got Darius Slay, Sidney Jones, Maddox, Nicole Roby Coleman, and Cravon LeBlanc. Now, I think it's likely that Rizal Douglas is moved, and having Jalen Mills at safety, in my mind at least, ticks that second box in a pinch should the Eagles need an outside starter. That immediately puts a roadblock in front of a guy like Trevor Williams, who, well, has a lot of talent, hasn't proven he can stay healthy, is on a cheap contract, and he's going to have to do something substantial to overcome that and say, hey, I'm worth more than Jalen Mills maybe playing some outside snaps in a pinch. That's going to be something to watch. Craven LeBlanc could be the guy that takes a fall for someone like Trevor Williams, and I'm not sure whether or not that would happen. He's got his own fight to worry about in regards to Avante Maddox and Nicole Roby Coleman, but we know the Eagles like their nickel defenders, and keeping all of those guys around makes a lot of sense to me. Safety, it's easy here. Four names, Rodney McLeod, Kayvon Wallace, Jalen Mills, and Will Parks. Very little in the way of a fight here. All of these guys should comfortably make the roster, at least for the time being. And then on special teams, we've got Cameron Johnston and his iron leg, Jake Elliott and Rick Lovato. Bringing our roster to 53. But what about the practice squad? Well, the 10 names I would have gone for were Kez Watkins, Michael Jackett, Michael Warren, Sean Bradley, Carl Auletta, who I think could be the guy again to displace Nate Sudfeld, Albert Huggins and Anthony Rush, Julian Good-Jones, Sua Opeta and Casey Tucker. Now, the two extra names, well, we guys, they work out at rookie minicamp. We know the Eagles tend to bring on some extra arsenal then. Nate Herbig was one of those names last year, I believe. Um, it could also end up being another name that's currently on the edge of the roster. So I don't want to give those positions away just yet. I want to leave those two open because looking at it, you might as well just say the entire undrafted class and that's kind of a cop-out. So I think there is some opening there 
for some guys that work out at Rookie Minicamp. But it's a very intriguing picture, and I want to hear your guys' thoughts. So what do you think of this current roster prediction? Would you be happy with it? What would you change? Let me know down in the comments. From myself, Liam Jenkins, you can follow me on Twitter at Liam Jenkins PSN. I'll see you soon.